bad UK drill I want to show you, dude. Yeah? So much bad rap I want to show you. Good. Like, I'm as excited as I am for you to be here and to talk to you. <laughs> I'm more excited to get through this and just get straight into all the bad music. Yeah. And show you all the good things that I've done to myself while you've been away. It's been too you, long. Like, normally like I feel like... yourself? I, like... I feel like every time <laughs> I see you, I show you the music I'm listening to, and you're yeah. like, hey, yo. Like, <laughs> pause on that. Yeah, like, yeah. And then you show me something, I'm like, that is way better. You're right. Let's do and that. And then you start listening to that, and then yeah. you, and it then puts you on. gradually every... start listening to... I fall back. I yeah. fall back. <laughs> <laughs> I fall back. And at the moment, I am, yeah, right at the bottom of that well. So yeah. I'm very happy so, to hear Oh, so it's prime me time up. for me prime to Prime time. Here. It's been too long. Right. Uh, it has been too long. By that last beat you put on, I... Pretty good. It's pre- it was. It's pretty apparent. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. It's funny because there, there's not many people who I'm talking. I listen to like UK drill. Yeah. And they're very. I don't think I publicize it too much, but for yeah. the ones who do, it's like a great running joke of just I don't know why. Like I yeah. obviously like I grew up with like metal, metalcore, and got into all that bullshit. Yeah, like yeah. that's still what I like the most. Not what I consume the most at no. all. <laughs> it's no. horrible. Are you the same? Like, do you listen to what you? Yeah, I guess what's your, do you have a favorite and is that what you listen to the most? Um, I have like these like stints yeah. where like I'll, I'll get really into something. Like yeah. if a particular album comes out, I'll like just listen yeah. to it till I hate it. Yeah. Um, I'll make a new play and then I'll, then I'll like throw that into like a big playlist yep. and then I listen to that playlist until I hate it. Like You're I have a big like, playlist guy. Yeah. Yeah. I have like a 12, almost 13 hour playlist of just <laughs> rap and it's all like the same, it's maybe 20 artists. I thought you were going to say 12 or 13 day playlist. <laughs> like no, that's no. I, I really thought you were going there. And then I like restarted. I made another one. I made it 2.0 Damn. and that's on like. That's only on like three hours right Are now. Are the two playlists in a like similar ballpark, or is like a clearly a newer and an older one or something? No, they're like totally they're like separate. the same. They're like the same. Oh, it's like part. It is a part. It's two. just. It's just. I was just like, all right, I'm getting sick of listening to this yeah. twelve hours of music. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make a new twelve hours of music, but I haven't gotten there. That's a lot. Just, to... It's just been like the same three hours. I feel like most people like time. overplay an album, and you're going overplaying yeah. twelve hours of music. Yeah, but I mean that's. That's always been you, is you've always been consuming a ton of music and creating a ton of music, and it's always been, like, a wide array of music along the way. Like, everything yeah. you listen to, every time you show me something, I'm like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard, or it's something totally <laughs> off the beaten path that I'm aware yeah. of. And then every time you create something, I feel like it's also some blending, some awesome, uh, yeah, blending of two arts, two musics. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I lost my train of thought there so hard. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> All right, my king. I got a little wild there. I don't know if that's going to be a break or if we just started the episode. Okay. But either way, I'm very happy that you're here. <laughs> 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 we got off on a tangent talking about my UK drill yeah. and all the wild stuff I go through, and that is all fantastic. Mm-hmm. A little off the beaten path, as they would say. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important part is that I'm glad you're here. It's been too long since I've seen you. Yes. And, I, yeah, I can never keep up with what you're doing. I feel like you're always putting out a bunch of different stuff in a bunch of different genres. And I'm always curious about how the yeah how it all works together, how you have so many different ideas pouring out of you all the time. So I guess the place to start is, yeah, what are you working on now? What are the current projects that are taking up most of your creative energy? Uh, currently, the, the most of what I'm doing is probably terahertz. Okay. Which is my breakbeat uh, electronic. It's just mess hell yeah melodic mess you know hell yeah because <laughs> it's just kind of i'll like branch out and do all all kinds of like different subgenres, mm-hmm. like not even like really knowing <laughs> yeah and so because i'm always trying to make something different yeah that's my thing i love that about you i think that there's like an endless pursuit to mix these two things and it's fun to watch it unfold and now Terra Hurts, like, it's, it feels out of left field to me. Like, I've always kind of known you as, like, a hardcore guy, and there was some, like, I guess production-heavy stuff in there. Yeah. And now it feels like it's full production stuff. That's a really yeah. interesting, like, transition to make. Like, I, I, I'd always dabbled. Yeah. Like, when I was in high school, before I was recording myself on guitar, which is what I really started doing, um, I, like pirated like fruity loops and don't arrest me and um <laughs> yo if we get enough loops, we get arrested dude i got you so that's a little closer yeah yeah you. yeah or um, 
So I Pirate of Fruity Loops and Pirate of Fruity Loops, and I Fruity saw this movie Cops. Wrong Cops. Okay, which was directed um, by Mr. Oizo, who is an electronic producer, and he d- did all the music for it, obviously, and. It just like I never heard electronic music like that presented in that way, and just the way that he does things. Because I started getting into his music mm-hmm. after the fact, I saw the movie, and um, I was like, I want to make electronic music. So I got Fruity Loops, and I like tried making just like the worst electronic music I, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. ever heard, yep. and uh, and then I was like, well, that's enough of that, <laughs> and then. Uh, I also tried making beats in that time. Gotcha. And that's what ended up sticking a lot more. That I, fe- I actually fell out of. Okay. I, that was like in high school. So like I didn't, so I was probably 16, 17, and I didn't start really recording like songs until I was 19, almost 20, I think. So it was a bit of a gap in mm-hmm. between that. Like, I didn't really know what I was doing and just kind of put it down. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> I, what really did it for me was I was doing this project with Federico Zuccarelli. And we... We are just doing, like, cool, like, twinkly guitars and, like, writing, like, every section together. Mm-hmm. Like, just, we, re- we, would, we would stay up from, like, 10 until, like, 3 in the morning. Like, 10 a.m. to, like, 3 in the morning just writing That's real constantly. music hours, yeah. Um, I forgot about this. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then uh, his interest shifted to rap music. Mm-hmm. And namely Suicide Boys, and he had shown me Suicide Boys, and I never, because of my like metal background, I mm. never dove into, like I didn't know about Suicide Boys' like influences, yeah, and like where what they take, what <laughs> what they where they take from what they do, sure, yeah, um, and so I was just like, whoa, like what what is this? Mm-hmm. And that really got me wanting to make beats and, like, get into production. Um, First off, mad love, Feds, if you end up catching this at any point. (laughs) Love you, Fed. Hope you're well. Uh, Part two of that is, as you're talking about Suicide Boys, it's funny because I had that same moment, but 10 years later, and I guess now that's what's gotten me into UK drill at some point. Yeah. Um, But it is a really interesting thing that they've got out of, like, it is... uh, a way that made a new genre kind of accessible to people who are from metal. And there is kind of like yeah. a heavy enough influence there. And yeah, yeah. kind of blends it, the It's like, it's, it's not what they're doing is entirely new. Yeah. Like three, six mafia was doing that. Like they, they, they have three, six mafia like in their songs, you know, yeah. like yeah. they take like samples, like this is all news and, to me, by the way. That's and, how like, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, uh, but they just the way that they do it, and mm-hmm. they and you know Ruby like being in like punk bands and stuff. I'm sure mm-hmm. he has a little like influence with yeah. that. So like, yeah. you know, it was just presented in a way to me. Yeah, that was as like a metal person. It was mm-hmm. like super accessible, and I was like, I was like, wow, I wanna I wanna do stuff like this. And then me and Federico started making just terrible music. Oh yeah. I still sorry, enjoy it. Sorry, right. Fed, but that was it was compared to what each of us are doing now. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think was, that's always a fun thing, though, is to look back yeah. a couple of years ago and be like, "Dude, I stunk then." Yeah, and we're gonna look back and say that about this now, and I'm excited about that. And it's yeah. like part of this I've learned to almost love of like, wow, if I just keep doing this, how much better can it be? And right. It's an exciting. Like, yeah, it will stink when I look back, and that's a good yeah. thing. That means oh, I've come a long should, way. Yeah, it should stink. <laughs> like, yeah, it should stink. <laughs> <laughs> Although, <laughs> that's a really good point it should stick yeah if, uh, I guess there is a line there because like I've, I've recently I think been able to look back at old videos and feel proud of them like they are I think yeah I, I used to look back and they'd be like that is amateur and I look back and I'm like no that's, I'm actually proud of that I'm like, yeah. it is still bad but I'm also proud of it yes <laughs> and yes. I think that there's an importance there of like I don't hate my old work mm-hmm. like, I do think it's bad I wouldn't <laughs> do it now but yeah. 
it's worth something to someone. Yeah. And to me back then, certainly it was. Absolutely. I'll still go back and listen to like my old, older music and, you know, just think about how far I've come. And Do you find inspiration from that? Um, like, not really. My inspiration is very sporadic and mostly... It's, it's hard to say where my inspiration comes from because, like, I get this drive to just create. Um, sometimes it's fueled by an emotion, and sometimes it's just that. It's just, mm -hmm. like, I need to make something mm -hmm. um, because it just feels it just feels great, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have these stints where I'm just constantly want to create and i'll just bang out like song after song after song after song you mm -hmm. know and so that's kind of how the rap thing gets going so we yeah we get exposed to suicide boys we get into rap and then oh and right so right that and um i was interested in drum and bass for a little while like i had heard like a f like things of it like going around like on the internet like little like, clips or whatever and, like, I never, again, that's something I never was, like, exposed to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I found, like, all the more modern, like, drum and bass and, like, break core, as everyone's calling it, which it's really, like, a lot oh, of it's the... not actually break. It's, it's, <laughs> the genre debate I'll never ends. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll save that for Reddit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good place for it. And, uh... I I found that probably I want to say close to a year ago. It was it was about this time last year and the first song I heard it was by uh someone named Harmful Logic uh, a thousand percent feelings and that was the song and I was like I I want to make this that like I'll hear yeah. something and I go I want to do that yep. and it never comes out the way I want it to mm -hmm. but it comes out my way yeah you know yep um, I I love that uh, it's a weird like I don't want to be you but I do want to do that and if I only, yeah if I did exactly that I also wouldn't be happy so it but is even a weird, like, e false goal it's like even for fun like I've yeah. tried to just copy someone mm -hmm. like I'll I'll literally like take a chords from chords mm -hmm. from a song that's already made and like mm -hmm. and i'll go what can i do with these interesting and it's then interesting exercise. you know stuff like that but uh once i once i started making the terahertz stuff i i made like 50 songs in like a month or two <laughs> which <laughs> was just overdrive for me yeah um like full production songs or like yeah demo like, like Start to finish, songs done. Could no, go. like done song. Like I have a playlist that's probably <laughs> like sixty something songs now, and they're all just songs that are ready to be released. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Do you have anything yeah. out officially yet? I have one terahertz song on like Spotify and all the streaming services. There's two terahertz songs on SoundCloud. Perfect. Um, but I am working on an album because. The like so my the whole like idea with terahertz is that uh, <laughs> it's 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 such a big story like my brother is uh, creating a three D world Evergrave two thousand on Instagram gotta shout him out I've worked with him a ton he's the man yeah I've he worked with him man. to build some sets as well he is yeah. so he's been just going insane losing his mind in Blender. That's relatable. Um, <laughs> we were just talking about that. And uh, he's he's working on creating an entire universe. Mm -hmm. um, That's and, so cool. I love, yeah. And, you know, just to for us to do with it as we please. And um, Terahertz is not me. Terahertz is a, is someone who lives in our constructed universe. Hell yeah, okay. Um so this first album that I have coming out, it's it's called Can You Hear Me dot zip. And it is his 
it is a file that's been uh, that that has been transmitted, and it's the first file that we're that that uh, you know our dimension is receiving from mm-hmm. terahertz. Yeah, that's so cool. I, so it's like I'm yeah. I'm I have all the songs done. Yeah, I'm like working on the little bits in between and really like feeding into that lore. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen bits and pieces of the project and I'm sure what I saw was a, a puddle or a, a drop in the puddle, whatever. Yeah. What saying yeah, is yeah. A little piece of what it is now. And that's so sick. I love the, just the size of that universe to create and then yeah, to populate you guys, you kind of alluded to like, you don't quite know how you're going to populate. It. I think it's half the fun of creating yeah. them to that scale is like, it just is cool. It feels yeah. cool. It feels right. Let's just, yeah, see it yeah. through and see what else unfolds out of this thing. Yeah. And I'm, so like, I'm going to, you know, Joey's going to be working on the, the visuals mm-hmm. and I'm going to be working on all of our audio. Hell yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, eventually I, I want to get into like Foley and like making, making sounds with just random objects. the best Instagram video. <laughs> you know, it, but it's, it's so cool because yeah. it sounds so good. Yep. You know, it's one of those things that I never I started mostly with music videos and in music videos, I didn't have to think at all about audio. Mm -hmm. And then slowly I started doing like little documentary stuff, a little behind the scenes stuff. And now I've really I really enjoy that part of it. I think music videos are still what I enjoy the most, but definitely documentary stuff and that behind the scenes stuff and that more filmmaking side of stuff is really interesting. And as you get into that, you realize that if you're only making a good visual, you're only making 50% of a good product. Yeah. And for me coming from a music video world, it's like, I don't touch audio. I don't do that. Like Mm -hmm. that's not something I care about. Yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, no, I have to care about this to make this other thing happen. Yeah. Um, so I had to get into the Foley world and start, yeah, appreciating footsteps and Mm -hmm. bells and wind and ambient sounds and how all that can (laughs) add to the, to the emotion of a piece. And I've, uh, just to wrap that thought up, I've heard the, I like good film directors or good film critics will watch a film three times. Mm-hmm. The first time, like only listen to it. The second time, like nothing or only, yeah, only listen to it. Then only watch it with no sound. And the third time is both together. And it's really? a way to just like really consume each piece of it. Yeah. I don't think that's the way you need to watch a movie. No. But, but it really but... struck me as like, that's how important <clears throat> these things are. I, like I always thought it was a video and the audio is just like there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, no, no. These are two separate arts that are really yeah. uh, cohesive to make yeah. this thing strong. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, do you have a release date for your album? You mentioned that it might be coming out. Is that a, uh, in the pipeline? I don't, or is that like a... Like I said, all the songs are done. Mm-hmm. Um, I just need to get some... I need a cover and I need to get some of the bells and whistles and yeah. all that figured out. Got you. Um, but hopefully within the next like month or two, it, it'll it be out. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And then uh, as far as Joe's end on the on the visual side of stuff, mm-hmm. anything we can expect there? Like what is it? It's... He's, he's, he's working. Yeah. He's working. He, um, I'll chat with him at some point for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 He'd be awesome on here. Hell um, yeah. But he... Uh, He's pretty down low with what he's doing, you know. Awesome. He, okay. he he posts like I said, Evergrave two thousand on Instagram. Mm-hmm. He he'll post very sparingly, like yeah. just to his story and just give little looks at what he's doing. You Got know? you. Yeah. I'm the worst about keeping up with social media and like being <clears throat> active on it. And yeah. it's such a weird like I, I think probably bands and artists star would be the number one advocates of like how it's just a weird prerequisite to be an artist now of like you have to be oh, a man. social media persona to some yeah. degree and it's it is such a missed opportunity if you're not and almost yeah. a not even a missed opportunity like there's no chance of success without that like it's almost impossible to imagine a band succeeding without an instagram right now or without tiktok whatever yep it's me and joey we're all we're talking about that yeah. and we're just waiting for the next one mm-hmm. <laughs> because instagram twitter yeah Facebook, you name it, like it's it's TikTok, it's saturated. Yep. It there's just so much going on. Yeah. And like it's so hard. It's it's <laughs> it's impossible to make it without an Instagram, but it's also impossible to stick your head up above the rest sure. of all these other people, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I think that's a weird argument. I it's like it's 
Not that it's impossible, but yeah. like it, it can feel like it is. One hundred percent. I think for the for the music video, from the photo side of things, I definitely mm-hmm. have that sense of like, yeah, how do I make my profile better than these people who curate their whole page and they plan out where every post goes, so that everything is in sync and it's right. color coordinated and thematic. And it's like, yo, I go and I make something cool and I put that on Instagram. Like that, right. those two philosophies, like one is a clear winner there and I'm going to lose that every time. Well, I, I, I don't think that that always works either. Definitely. You know, um, it, it, it depends. I think it depends on who you are and what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. You know? I think the, to me, the, the key there is just like that. Um, I don't know. I don't remember what the key was anymore. Because I've seen pages like that before, and I was like, this is just kind of weird. Especially if yeah. they're trying to give you content, mm-hmm. but they're making three posts within 30 seconds. Yeah. So that, so that they're paid, you so anything. you have to go yeah. to their page. You Definitely. Know? Uh, I think the, I remember my point where I was going there, it's just the idea of like, mm, to stand out above the crowd, it you can always find an excuse of why it won't work. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, by not participating in this thing that I'm for sure going to get lost in the crowd. Yeah. So it's this weird, like, yeah, I've, I guess I've tried to accept, like, I'm, it's, I'm not going to do well on social media per se. Like, it's just not a, a strength of mine, mm-hmm. but I kind of have to bite the bullet and just do my best to oh, <laughs> keep yeah. chugging stuff out Yeah. because it is, yeah, you're doomed without it to some degree. Yeah. That's, that's like the hardest thing for yeah. me because yeah, I'm, I'm just like you, Peter. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is not the side of yeah. the business side of things. Yeah. Is not my side of yep. things. Like I yep. am, I'm 100 percent like a creative. Yes, and that's yeah. <laughs> and I cook at Chili's. <laughs> <laughs> we always are creating, and I think that's yeah. the that's always been my favorite part of you. It's just this never-ending quest of like nothing's good enough, nothing's done, nothing's finished, nothing's. Um, you're always exploring the next thing. Like there's no end in sight. It's not like you're going to get to a point. Like I've, I feel like some people talk about this album. It's like, I'm going to put this album out and like, that's it. I'm done. And it's like, I don't know. I don't think that's a, a natural creative thing. I think that gets yeah. into a weird, like social creative status. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and I, yeah, I feel like there's a really organic creativity that comes out. of it. It's been fun to watch it unfold. Thank you, man. Um, I, I always like, I hate, I, I never, if I ever make a song that I think sounds like another song that I've made, I scrap it. Mm -hmm. I get rid of it. What uh, percent of songs never see the light of day from you? I love asking people this because it's always a a scary amount. I, it, it really depends because... If I'm feeling inspired, everything I work on, I will finish. Yeah. I, even if I'm at the end of it, I'm like, this is whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll finish it. I don't, because I can just, I feel like I can go forever. And then I'll immediately just start another song or something, you know, like, but if I'm not feeling it, then nothing gets finished. Yep. So I'd say in a, in a year, I probably use about half or so. Okay. Because if I'm not feeling it, like, there'll be weeks, months where I just don't even try. Yeah. I don't even pick up my laptop. Like, I just, I leave it alone. I live my life. I, I, let, I let that inspiration come back to me. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then I go sick again. But yeah. I never, I'll never, like, lose sight of, you know, wanting to do that. Because mm-hmm. of, that'll never leave me. Yeah. You know? How do you, what makes you pick up the laptop again or what makes you put it down in the first place? What makes me put it down? Yeah, or pick it back up. Uh, what makes me put it down is just like just putting myself down, I guess, gotcha. you know? Yeah, yeah, um, Just not feeling like yeah. I could make anything worth so listening to. So it's not a project to. ends, it's just like, yeah, that, that fire, that spark somehow. Yeah, I have, like, yeah. I have to have that, that fire in me mm-hmm. or... It, it's not getting done. Yeah. Every once in a while, I could just like whatever my way through a track, and then at the end of it, be like, "Oh, this isn't bad." Mm-hmm. But you know, 
<laughs> Can't do that forever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I, I don't like to do it. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't. And then when you pick it back up, is it, uh, is it exciting? Is it a, a oh. task you have to check off? Mm. Is it a song has written itself halfway in your head and then you're like, yeah, what is, what is picking it back up like? Picking it back up is like, damn, I really want to make a song. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. That, Sometimes something will happen to me, like I said, like, and I'll, I'll be emotionally charged about something and want to put that into, into my music. But typically, yeah, man, I'm just, I'm like, I need to make something. Mm-hmm. Like, just, I think that that's just the most beautiful thing yeah. in the world is, is, is that human expression, you know? I think there is a... Um, I've heard the argument that there's a finite number of musical notes and therefore there's a finite number of songs that are possible. Or, and it's like, no. No. Like I, and I have the same thing with music video sets of like, yeah, there's been a ton of videos filmed in a warehouse and like, I'm not going to show up to a warehouse and reinvent the wheel. But also, whatever we do in this warehouse tonight will never be done again and has never been done. And not that it's better than anything or worse. It's just like, right. this moment in time will never exist again with no. these people in this yeah. place in this situation. Yep. Every, everything down to where you're standing, where they're yeah. standing, the yeah. lighting, everything, every little bit of that is unique. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. And in the creation in, of a song, yeah, in, it's the same thing. with songs, it's the same thing. It's, yeah. even if, like, like I said, I took, I, just the other day, I took chords from a song and it sounds nothing like that song, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It's, it's total, and I even used like a similar synth sound. It's like a totally different, different song, yeah, yeah. you know? Hell yeah. yeah. I, uh, I want to take a trip down memory lane for a moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, some of the exciting places. So uh, for, for context here, you are, I think, one of the first people I meet in the band world. So when mm-hmm. I first pick up my camera, I am, I'm leaving college, and I'm kind of like, I don't like this, it's not for me, but I don't know what is for me. Yeah. So I go out and I try a bunch of things, and one of those things was investing 300 of my lifeguarding dollars into a camera. <laughs> <laughs> and thankfully that one did stick. But yeah, it was a pretty quick from getting that camera, and then within a couple months I'm at local shows all the time, just loving it and not making you a penny off of it. every show, I man. I did my best to be. Yeah. Uh, and I reflect fondly of like, it took a while because I think most people pick up a camera and they are in a band. I think that's a normal pipeline is you are already in a band and that's why you're in the room. And then just to be in the room more to help pay for gas money or whatever, you pick up a camera. Yeah. And for me, it was like I was learning both the art and also the entire world of how to be in a band, how to be in a venue and how to interact with you guys and what the whole deal is. And then yeah. how to take promos and how much feedback do I give you and how willing are you and how does that whole process work? And it, again, it's that same idea of looking back and being like, damn, those all stunk. Those photos are terrible. <laughs> but it was a great time. It all worked out great. Behind the garage at yep. my house. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was, you remember exactly the uh, same snow? It's like a foot of snow outside. We're walking. And it was one of those, like, I taking camera, taking photos outside with no lighting at night in the snow. Like, it's a yep. great, like, yep. it was such a bad idea. And I didn't know that. And, like, none yeah. of us knew that. We all just thought it would be cool. And. I guess to some degree. We were all excited uh, to have you, man. So stoked. <laughs> and I was stoked to be there, but I had no idea what I was doing. It was yeah. just a big, like, fake it. But we got it. those pictures back from uh, you when, you were, when we were like, yo, these are sick. <laughs> <laughs> probably, dude. I probably, like, was stoked on them at some point. Um, I should see if I could find those. I probably won't. But um, <laughs> I, I might be able to find them. Dude, I keep saying I'm going to, like, put pictures into these, and every time I just, <laughs> just don't. I might be able to find them. Um, but, yeah, I think it was... Uh, it was fun, and I think it also goes to just the, the creative drive of, like, none of us knew what we were doing, but we knew that we wanted to do this, and this was one of the pieces, and kind of just like Instagram now, it's like, we don't really know, we're not going to mm-hmm. put the time into doing it, but, yeah, let's take promos, let's figure out how to be on camera yeah, and make yeah. this thing happen. Um, what, uh, <laughs> this is tr- <laughs> I'm just laughing at all just, just like all the point beaches of the world. I'm just like, oh, what the man. hell was that place? And I just saw that it was opening again. Uh, no. Ale- apparently. Allegedly. I don't know if that. Uh, I'm actually pretty sure it's true. I'm almost positive that it is going to happen. Whoa. Um, and just a, yeah, why? I'm going to have to start another band. 
Yeah. <laughs> Dude, everyone has to. It's going to be crazy. Uh, it'd be so fun to go back there and have a, like, a retirement show home with all of us. <laughs> um, but the other piece of that is like, so we start and we're, yeah, in local shows and nothing. And I think mm-hmm. that's the other half of the creative thing is like sometimes in your room creating, sometimes it's performing to no one. And it's mm-hmm. just those empty rooms and grinding through those days of zero dollars empty rooms and losing money on the whole trip. Yeah. And empty still rooms. Yeah. Ugh. As a, as a <laughs> that hardcore was the worst. Yeah. How do that you, was the worst. how do you pick yourself up after one of those shows? Like what makes you play another? Like, I think, I, okay. So that was a very, I, let me clarify first yeah. before that was a very different time in my life. Yeah. And, um, and we can all, I think <laughs> everyone can agree. We were all assholes <laughs> sure. in that band. And uh, we were just kind of like, fuck it, fuck them, whatever. I, it's a weird musical thing to me. Like, uh, just that ability to go on stage and be resilient to it, where I think I'm, yeah. I'm very sheltered in my releases, where I put out a video and I don't see anyone see it. Yeah. I don't yeah. see anything about it. If I like, don't go read the comments, like, nothing happens. It, like, I yeah. have no connection to that release. And being on stage is the complete opposite. Like you just yeah. have no, no filter from that. You could like start v- like editing in front of a crowd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just do like a really nice cut. Everyone goes. Yeah. I should. I should. I filmed. Uh, it's been like a problem almost of like just. Uh, yeah. How do I? Who cares about like who is seeing my work? If I'm just throwing it into the void always, and it's just weird. Right. Like I am creating for me, but I think on some level we're all. We all need some pat on the back at some point. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Some, the like only, a, like, uh, only way I've gotten that, where I think you guys get it on stage and there's all the unsung hours, my only version of that is I filmed, like, a, like an intro video for, like, a festival. And mm-hmm. so, like, it plays in the sold-out mm-hmm. arena, like, as it's full and it's excited and everyone's, yeah, like, counting yeah. down. And, like, as the countdown I edited for my bedroom is playing, they're all counting down with it. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, holy shit, like, these kids have no idea that was me. But, like, that yeah. shit was me. Yeah. <laughs> that was me. Uh, so it's cool how those like singular moments can carry yeah. you, carry you through and give you momentum through it. Yeah. Um, I think the other playing in terrible places and filming music videos in terrible places. <laughs> I went back. We filmed like four or five videos where we're sitting right now, yes. at least. Yeah. Like rap we, videos from the whole. We did three, technically three videos down here, mm-hmm. and. One band photo shoot. We did. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've done yeah a bunch of photo shoots, but our three videos for <laughs> not much money. Um, but I had to go back and I did, did watch. Yeah, because we did headlights oh. down here. We did. Yeah. Um, I got them all here. Was well, we did poison down here. Okay, and we Part did. Of it, yeah. uh, and we did. That little bit of figure in figure black. black, yeah. Dude, figure in black, I go back and I watch, and it's one of my favorite things I've ever done. Yeah? Not that it, I don't know if it, the reason I say that is because I look back, and like, we had nothing, and mm-hmm. up to that point, it was like, a, I, I don't know, you always have the thought, like, I, I need something to create something for me. It was like, I need to take a photo of something, I need to film something. Yeah. And that was like, you sent me a song and I sent you a music video. Yeah. <laughs> and there was nothing in between. <laughs> yeah, no. Like, it's stock images, it's animated, it's, yeah, stock footage that I found online, it's footage from old horror movies, like, it's yeah. all kinds of stuff cut up. But it was a kind of coming of age moment for me, I felt like, of realizing, like, oh, you can make something from anything. I don't necessarily yeah. need the, mm-hmm. the right light or the right sound or the right footage here, like, yeah, that's we'll a, figure it out. <laughs> that's like me when I hear a beat that's just yeah. drums and mm-hmm. 808. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you don't really need anything. Yeah. You just, <laughs> you just need a drum kit. <laughs> Do you think that's, like, enjoyable because your brain can write the rest of this pe- stuff on top of that? Like, like for was, me personally or sure. just people in general? You personally. Maybe. Um, I think... Because when I listen to other people's music, I don't really be like, oh, well, he could have... You know, my first thought isn't, oh, they could have done this or they could have done that mm-hmm. or like it would have been sick unless like it, it does happen sometimes, sure. but like 90% of the time that's not happening. Yeah. Like I'm taking the song at face value. Um, and and what, what was the point? 
So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the other video we forgot that we filmed down here was a uh, fear eater. It was that. Oh, we, we did. did do fear. Eater so this one's a fun there, one yes. down here. Uh, yes, it's a fun story. Would, so, that's what that made me think of actually. I forgot about that. That actually might be the same bulb. Almost definitely is the same <laughs> white bulb for yeah. that music video. That's fine. I didn't even realize that. There's a piece of the, like the wood on the wall over there. Oh, it's there. Not, yeah, that doesn't help anyone who's watching oh, this. Oh yeah. Thing, but, um, uh, but yeah, so that was again like I think we're both at a point of like you were rapping and you're like I want to do more things, and for me it was like I need to make a video and I don't have anyone who's gonna trust me to do that quite yet on a band scale. Mm -hmm. um, so to this point, I had done, I think, for start, uh, backing up, you were my first music video before this. So I had done solo video, rap videos of you. Uh, we did Cellar we did Door. Cellar Door. Which is, yeah. Um, another outside one. Another, like, go figure it out. Just take a camera and a drive. It was raining. It was. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of looks cool. Yeah. It, I watched that the other day. And, like, yeah, I'm not stoked on the video. But, like, I was stoked on the memory. It was a good time. And I to, think I had a mustache. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe. Yeah. Hey man, we all go through phases. That was, but it's funny because that was like a week. Oh, that was like the only week of my life I had a mustache. <laughs> you just did it for the video? No, I did it. I did it for another reason. <laughs> I think it was just because it was funny. It's funny, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just did it because it was funny. That's so sick to put out your first like piece of content <laughs> and style yourself based on what's funny. <laughs> I just loved it because I was like, it's all right. Yeah, that was the worst that could happen. Um, yeah. But no, so then we go from this, that to Fear Eater. And Fear Eater is a kind of another blending of worlds thing um, of, mm -hmm. yeah, I wanted to do a music video and I was working with my buddy Chris as a producer at the time. And so him and I kind of sat down and it was <laughs> me coming in with probably Suicide Boy songs to go back to the beginning and tie it all together. Probably. Uh, and saying like, yo, how do we tie this in with like, some like a breakdown that makes you laugh. It's so heavy. Um, and thankfully he was able to pull it together. He's the, the musical mastermind there. Yeah. And then, yeah, we built the set and made it happen down here. Yeah. Um, but that was a, yeah, it was another free 99 project of all of us showing up on our day off probably. Yeah. Um, and there was a ton of people involved. We had the full five of us volunteering as mm -hmm. band, uh, photo production. Joe came in and painted for that as well. Yep. Joey did. Yeah. We've done it all. Yeah, uh, the mask and the video he made as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Um, <laughs> damn, dude, we've done a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And now... Well, we went out to New York City. We did. Shot a video that never saw the light of day. I guess twice we went to New York City. Because we did one in New York City that did see the light of day. <laughs> right. Wasn't that... Right, was right, right. Yes, yes. I <laughs> meant the first one. The first one. <laughs> The there's, second time that worked out, yeah. There's a special effects shot in that video. It still lives, like, rent-free in my head of, like, flowers falling. Oh, um, and yes. It, it makes me so I, mad. Yeah, every time I think of that video, that's the shot I think of, yeah. That kid sucked, though. The kid featuring on the song. It's, I was like, oh, uh, I just don't want him <laughs> want to be associated with you, man. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know anything about that part, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's just what it was that's all that's why you know that he'll never hear and this. that's no um, and yeah it never came out so it's no, okay that's um, fine but no it is a a weird you probably have songs in the vault like that too where you look back and go damn that's the one that got away and to me that's one of the shots i look back and it's like i wish that one came out i wish that one worked out kind of kind of kind of if i didn't release it i probably wasn't all that stoked on it gotcha um, there is a, there is an EP that was back when I was young death, um, that, that video was from mm -hmm. that whole EP just never even got released Gotcha. because I just didn't feel like my quality was there and I felt like it was really good at the time. So like I waited and I waited so long that I made more music that sounded better. Than, <laughs> I remember this than, process, and I remember being annoyed at you because the, it was good. Like, it should have come out. Yeah. But but, but now... I'll go, I go back and listen to it, though, yeah. and I'm like, this is... I'm impartial. <laughs> sure. You know? But it, now we got Lillian Rot stuff coming out. Now it's Lillian Rot. Um, That's been happening. I went through the Spotify catalog. Yeah, I just, I just put out that EP, Distant Light, um, in like the end of November. Um, I think I'm going to, you know, not do the 
heavy stuff as much anymore under that name, except for, you know, on SoundCloud. On SoundCloud, I'll just put whatever. Mm -hmm. But as far as, like, my streaming services and stuff go, I'll just be, like, more more that direction of, like, Distant Light. Just a bit more, you know, accessible. It's not as uh, out there. Oh, yeah. You know? My man, we're getting to that point. Where can people look out for you? You mentioned the Spotify, what should, or Spotify and SoundCloud, rather. Where do yeah, where are people going? Where can they find you? Uh, you can look up Lilium Rot. Um, that is my Instagram. That's my Spotify. It's my Apple Music, everything. Um, and then uh, you can look up Terahertz, which is T-E-R-A-H-U-R-T-Z. Um, and I'll have links to everything or everything written in the bio. Yeah, yeah. Kind of and... Um, yeah, check out Ever Evergrave 2000 on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs>